thank you for tuning in to The Kids Are Asleep. Let me adjust my camera a little bit because um, that looked a little weird for a second there. It's me again, Jimmy Lillamu. Um, if you're wondering why am I wearing sunglasses, it's because I'm having an ugly day and um, I'm trying to accommodate that. I'm honoring my insecurity. Um, I'm honoring how I'm feeling about the fact that, you know, I don't really go out and engage with the world so much anymore. So I don't always have the impetus to get pulled together um, before I have to show up on a live that has been planned for weeks and weeks and weeks. But even with that, because I do have on a full face of makeup, I don't know, my hair is doing something. My eyes are doing something. I'm just not feeling like the glamorous bitch that I was before uh, everything happened. So I'll just, we'll call this the beginning of my breakdown. This is where it starts. Uh, I don't know, this might be the crescendo, who knows? Anyway, um, I hope that you all are having as great a week as possible, all things considered. It's certainly been a challenging week for uh, a lot of folks that I know, uh, as many recent weeks have been. I will say that my weeks have been challenging essentially since March 29th of 2013. That is when I became the mother to uh, my beautiful princess, Naima Freedom. And let me tell you something, if you give a kid the middle name Freedom, you should be prepared for how they're going to engage with the world. And that was the intention. We wanted a free child. We wanted a free spirited girl. We wanted a free black girl. And one uh, we most certainly have. And so the <laughs> something I've been thinking about a lot lately, if you've ever heard someone say, you know, someone who doesn't have children, oh, I don't like kids, or, you know, just any adult who, who's just like, ah, oh, I don't like kids. I've come to realize it's not all kids they're talking about. They're probably talking about a pretty specific age group. And at seven, my daughter is like smack in the middle of that age group. I'd say she's at the beginning, right? I say, I think it all kind of goes downhill from six, seven. Cause like, who doesn't like a three-year-old? Like you have to be some sort of monster to just dislike three-year-olds, right? Four-year-olds, five-year-olds, they're so sweet. They're so cute. They're so adorable, you know? Like they're independent, but they're needy. And like, they're just sweet little munchkins. But shit starts heating up a little bit around six or seven. They get a little spicy ricey, you know what I mean? And it's funny because like the only age where there's really any sort of cautioning or warning or directive is like two, right? Every parent I know is like, there were the terrible twos. I knew the terrible twos were coming. Everyone said they were awful. They were exactly what I expected, but nobody told me that three was worse. And nobody talks about three being worse. And if we're really being honest, some could argue that four is more challenging than three and that five is more challenging than four. And, and do you see where I'm going? That each year of raising your child on some level, it becomes more difficult. And even if you think that two is a peak and then the next one is puberty, we don't talk about any of those in between ages. And they're weird. They're super weird. Cause like a seven year old is so, and to be clear, my daughter is my favorite human being on the planet. I think she is beautiful and wonderful and creative and just the light of my life in every imaginable way. But like, she's fucking weird, dude. Like three-year-olds, sorry, seven-year-olds are weird. So are cats. Um, mine seems to think that she's allowed in this space and she's not. Um, the seven-year-olds are like characters from Adam Sandler movies. They're like zany. They don't have like a sense, like you can't describe them. Right, like it's it's as if you're saying somebody is a cancer, but also a little bit Aries with the streak of Taurus, and they're super prideful. So they're also a Leo, which is I guess what our charts are at this point. Now that we read all the bullet points as opposed to just our sun signs, but like, let me just give you an example of my daughter. This in one day, this week, in one day, she, while naked, and on all fours crawling around on the floor of the kitchen for reasons unbeknownst to me, unknown to me until at this moment still, and I was there, I witnessed the whole thing, crawling naked on the floor of the kitchen. And she, which is a lot for a human being period. It's a lot when it's an infant and it's a lot for a seven year old. She peed. <laughs> Like, 
in the middle of this bizarre, I was trying to get her to get ready to go. It was like get in the shower, you know, we, we had to get out the house. She's like, okay, but wait, I gotta show you something. I'll show you something. And like, whatever she has to show me, she was so enthusiastic about it. I guess she ends up on the floor and she's out. Ah. And like, and then, <laughs> and then she just says, oh no. I said, excuse me? Oh no. And then she like, it was that quick. Oh no. And I know that oh no. And it's not no no that I hear too often anymore because she's seven years old and we've been fortunate that she has not had a rough time with potty training. Uh, that bell that you're hearing running around is my cat. I'm the um, third most powerful woman in my house behind my seven year old and my three year old cat. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so she pees on my new little kitchen rug. Again, I don't know why she's even on the floor. Like, I'm a, I'm adverse to being on the floor at this point. Like, do you see me getting on the floor? Like, you're seven. We, we can say we left that behind. It's totally fine to be too sophisticated for the floor. You want to be so sophisticated in all these other ways. Oh, yeah, my guest is here. Yay, yay, yay. Um, but you want to be on the floor and you want to be on the floor crawling naked like a baby. Cause that's the thing about seven, like seven year olds become babies. Like they kind of just go like, when like at the drop of a hat. And sometimes it's a convincing performance. And other times I'm like, I'm watching you who has a vocabulary damn near as big as mine and certainly seems to think she's as sophisticated and, and worldly turn into a baby. Why are you doing this? Like you cannot weaponize your, sweetness and the fact that I gave birth to you not that long ago against me, but like, she's constantly trying to do that. So anyway, so yeah, so she pees on the floor and I felt so bad. Cause like she, I was trying so hard not to laugh. Cause I knew it wasn't like a traumatic thing. It was just like, Oh shit. You know, like if I wasn't there, she probably would have said, Oh shit. And I, cause it went from, there was no like, Oh, I gotta, you know, she literally, so what she actually said was she was like, Oh no. And then she said, I have to go to the bathroom and I don't think I'm gonna make it. That's what she said verbatim. I have to go to the bathroom. I don't think I'm gonna make it. And before I could get words out is when she peed. And I don't understand any of how that happened. But fast forward a few hours and this child is recording a YouTube tutorial on how to do makeup for a YouTube channel that does not exist. She's firm, like my daughter makes so much content for an audience of us. Um, Additionally, sometimes we say to other loved ones, bless her heart. But like kids today don't have imaginary friends. Like they have imaginary YouTube channels. Like they're playing with their dolls. They're like, hey guys, you know, and like unboxing and stuff. It's very bizarre. Anyway, um, I'm so glad that you're here. We are going to have a phenomenal uh, conversation tonight with uh, my friend, activist and artist, Dr. Shamel Bell. She's incredible. I'm going to bring her in now. Uh, if we are ready, and then we're going to jump right on into it. Hello. How are you? Is your mic on? Yes, girl. It's on now. I'm doing hey. great. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm so Am I happy still lagging? No, you're good. You're totally good. Okay, perfect. I'm so happy to see you. Let's just jump right into talking. Um, I'm curious to know how you are taking care of yourself right now while taking care of a child, while having a demanding career. And I know that's at this point, the self-care question has gotten to be a cliche question, but I think like, I'm not gonna lie, I've been lying about self-care for the past seven years. I've been telling a great tale of how well I care for myself and how I honor my body's needs. And it's been bull and shit, okay? I've done it in spurts. But I haven't been consistent in this moment. I'm like, no, we gotta. I have to be serious about this. I have to be. I have to name the fact that I've been doing just okay at it. But I want to hear what other people are doing because we. I think we have to be open with each other about what's working and what's not right now. Yeah. So it starts with breath. So I am being honest that I hold my breath every day, all day. And that's our life force. And so I, in my self-care, I have to remind myself the smallest thing is to breathe. And so as a practice, I believe that I'm doing great because I have a network of people that I do self-care with. So I make sure that I'm meditating. I make sure, making sure that I am 
going through my intergenerational traumas, uh, I don't even know if this is self-care, but I'm conflating healing and self-care. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing really deep work. And to be honest, because, you know, we talk about things on a personal level, it is important for me to show up in the world um, in a similar way. Well, to, it's, it's important for me to show up to, for myself in a similar way that I'm showing up in the world. I don't want y'all to see, I'm doing a global dance meditation. I'm talking yeah. about mental health and self care. So, you know, for me, when I turned it into like a liberatory practice, like I'm embodying liberation by doing self care, that's easier for me. Um, but to be honest, it's not easy like as a practice, right? Like I, I literally can't breathe. And so if for me to breathe, I have to do these things like remind myself to go in a shower and literally meditate and, you know, go through the things that are triggering me. So yeah, no, it's, it's a, a matter of I'm not eating well all the time and that's a part of self-care. So I guess to be honest, my healing practices are on point. So I'm digging deep within me, getting rid of my self-sabotaging behaviors, get winning, getting rid of um, toxicity around me, erecting boundaries, you know, like swerving all the like craziness, you know what I'm talking about. But as far as self-care, it's a, it has to be intentional and I have to see it as a, a as connected to your liberation as well as my own. I can't be this person that's here talking about, you know, we need to get free by actually living it if I'm not doing it. So, yeah, my self-care is, is healing is going better. <laughs> self-care. I, I probably didn't eat today. I, I'm eating chips and uh, popcorn. But you know what? I think the healing is self-care. And I will say when it comes to that, like that's where I've been good. You know, like especially since we've been shut down, that's where I'm doing the work, where I'm evaluating my relationships, my relationship to myself, to my body, um, you know, how I like lack of boundaries. Right. Which is a which is a <laughs> it's a common uh, issue for most women on some level and certainly mothers and black mothers and black mothers in certain mm -hmm. space, you know, we go on and on um, how difficult it is to have boundaries because part of what make part of what makes it difficult to institute boundaries, I say for the folks like us is the idea that if I do, what will be withdrawn from me in response, right? So will it be care and affection? Will it be respect? Will it be, you know, that I have Ooh. failed by having boundaries? So it's not that, you know, it's not constantly a, hey, can you do me a favor, right? There's an mm -hmm. expectation. Like even if, it's even if it's phrased as, hey, can you do me a favor? The expectation is still that it is part of your duty and these identities right. that you have to perform that work. And if you can't are you called that, sensitive? Are you being called sensitive for erecting boundaries as a black woman? Like, oh, you're just I've sensitive. Been, I've been called sensitive. I've been called crazy. I've been called selfish, you know, or, or I've been thought of as sometimes people take it too far. Like, OK, we're, you're trying to erect boundaries, so I'm not going to engage at all. You know, I'm not going to invite you to these things. Or I'm not going to include you in these things or I'm not going to court you. or I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not going to show up in your space because right, you have been. Right. So I need something that is endless, that can be drained, that can be, you know, or that, that cannot be drained. Um, but that, that, or if it's drained, I'm not going to, they're not going to make me aware of being drained. They'll just let me drain them. Absolutely. And so with that, because I want to make sure we get into, you know, the, the main event for tonight, if you will, um, being people who occupy that cir those circumstances from a very young age, right? It doesn't matter how old you are when you have your child. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a child at all. If you're a black woman in particular, if you're a woman, right? And again, we start there and we continue to go on and on. But speaking right. specifically of black women, the, the idea that we are in that other people's perception of us, their um, needs from us mean the absolute world. When we run afoul of them, uh, we are no longer regarded in the same way. So you're, there's a level of consistency that's expected. 
you know, like whether it's, con- it doesn't have to be like, that includes not, don't grow, don't get better, don't improve, right? It's like, I expect Woo! you where you were when I got you, right? And so Megan the Stallion, oh, by the way, everybody, we're not doing the drinking game tonight. We're workshopping the drinking game. We're going to try that again in the future, but I am certainly having a drink. Uh, I hope that you were able to to pour up a little something and that everyone who's watching is having a drink too because we've all had a very long week. Um, but Megan Thee Stallion embodies, first of all, like there's there's books to be written already about, you know, even though I don't necessarily think that's the right way to treat a, a, a person, right? A singular subject who just began her career professionally a few years ago. But you could certainly write a book uh, about all of the things that her public life brings to the fore for our people, right? right? Whether we recognize it or not, just the reception to, you know, good, bad, and otherwise, like the celebration around her body when she first comes around, but at the same time, how the body then becomes the body and not the woman and not the soul and the spirit, you know, and right. how easily, how easily um, people who were enamored by one are completely disinterested when the body is doing something else, right? And so now the body is healing. The body is no longer a source of public pleasure and scrutiny. And it was, it's a, certainly a source of public scrutiny right now, I should say, but it's no longer a source of public, you know, she, her body is no longer, our, her body is in public again, but it's not in public for us to be delighted by, but for us to mm-hmm. pity, for us to protect, Right, these are not the things that we thought of to, to see it as yeah. vulnerable, and so she shows up five eleven, gorgeous, you know, natural mm-hmm. curve, like an obviously black woman. Like she disrupts mm-hmm. a lot of what has gotten to be normal in terms of representation of women in hip hop, and she's on, on the big stage, right? Because there's been tons of indie, you know, women performers like. Even before the City Girls were a, a you know a household name, if you will, like they had a large fan base. So it's not that we weren't seeing sisters that didn't look like, you know, say Cardi B. Um, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. You know, in those spaces, but and I say and, and Cardi B was a beautiful disruption in a lot of ways too. So I'm not saying that to you know um, to suggest that Megan is an anti Cardi in any particular way, but she represented yeah. something was even more, you know, that was also essential and, and in many ways even more urgent to us, right? And so the, so she becomes this this figure to so many people. And now it's just I'm so fucked up over it. I'm so I'm so Yeah because it's there was more lit, like, yes, there was a lot of drooling over her body and a lot of, you know, gagging over just the fact that she was a woman who was a beautiful and a competent rapper and was writing her own stuff. And so many people who acted as if that was something they'd never seen before, you know, and, and there was certainly a lot about the fact that she's tall, the fact that she's a stout, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, she's, not, she's not what most people would call a big girl in terms of the world, you know what I mean? But like, in terms of what you see in entertainment, she's, you know, she is taller than the average woman. Like she is a big, you know, she, she takes up a lot of space. And most of the women you see in the industry are, are much smaller than they appear on camera. Right. Right. Like you, you, like you've seen these girls in public, you're you, like, you'd be surprised, you know, they're little. Right. And so right. to have someone who's 5'11 and, you know, that's, that's a big deal. That's tremendous. And I understand why there was a fixation on that, even though it's like, okay, but we can't just make her, a size eight. Oh, she's just not a size eight for a living. You know what I mean? Like she's not just twerking. She she's all these other things. But she's a college student, and she's got this you know unique story and all, all this. We love her. She's everywhere. She's inescapable. And then this thing happens, and it's as if it didn't happen. It, as if nobody noticed it, but black women outside of the entertainment industry. Right? Am I crazy? Like no. it, it was no. that or jokes, or it was jokes. It was jokes. That's what I saw more of. And this idea, you know, calling her masculine or trans and, you know, I'm just not understanding where we, if it's, you know, fake, then we're loving it. Right. But she's a natural, thick, brown skin woman. And, you know, for me, what's important about her is that she kind of turns this idea of like the hot and tot Venus, you know what I mean by the Sarah Bartman, you know, they're like, people are saying, oh, you know, the 
she doesn't deserve to be um, respected because what what happened to Hot Girl Summer, you know, that kind of thing. And so for me, people are mad because she's in her bag. She's intelligent. She's in her joy. And she's like turned on its head this idea that we are looking at and at, at the hot and top Venus as this subject. But she's taken on her body and her confidence and like the audacity of that, you know, and and, and then her lyrics, you know, that the aggressive black woman, right? And I, there's so many tropes. I'm 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 just throwing them off the top of my head. That's important too in her lyrics that she's not censoring male pleasure. It's her pleasure, my pleasure. You're my trick. Let's talk about that. And so that's the the audacity for you not to be constantly vying for male attention. And then another thing that I'm just really just taken aback by is just that she was literally in pain because she was shot in her foot. And it's this idea that plays out in, in the in American society that black women take more pain, you know, from yeah. childbirth to, to being in the hospital. You know, I mean, we saw that with Serena Williams, right? Where you can, that, that can be kind of comparable where Absolutely. she had to speak up. You know, from childbirth to relationships, um, black women are are supposed to take on pain, right? And, and this sure. this idea that when you're in a relationship as a black woman, you need to go through all the pain and all the hardship. And Meg is not on that. She's having her heart, hot girl summer. You know, she's yeah. out here with Beyonce. You know, and this idea that black women should be the one that is holding all the burdens. They should be the one that is, you know seen as you know if you're not being i guess as submissive is that what they want you know this I, um i think that is i think that is a big part of it that she's not you know submissive i think you know cardi had her detractors you know and there's a difference between like having detractors and having critics right or just having yeah reason yeah critique. Um, and, and just having people that are coming at you because of their misogyny or their, you know, loathing of black women or any number of things. But like, right. I think because Cardi was seen as public, like there's a difference in, cause the body type isn't entirely different, but it's a constructed body. One that she's very honest about, you know, she is a right. light right. uh Latina, Afro-Latina. Um, but like, we also saw her be vulnerable in a relationship with the man. Right, right, you know, right. Like, I think, and he, but even when I think of Rihanna, because you could say she's certainly benefited from certain privileges based on the way she looks, but like when she was assaulted by Chris Brown, the light skin and the light eyes, the way that usually shows up, people were still like, but you know, island women are kind of spicy, right? Like they, you know, they got a lot of mouth on them and she probably hit them first. You know, I've heard that she hit them first. You know, they used to fist fight narratives so many times from people who have absolutely no inside information. Right, like not folks that are like, well, you know, I know somebody, knows somebody. I'm like, you literally got this from a blog on internet.com, like, and you've decided that this is <laughs> internet.com. Like, I'm done with you. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, I could just type it up and say it, and you'd be like, see, I told you. Look, look at this tweet dated on June, you know, of last year. They said he hit, she hit him. Like, it's, the, it, it's that because the desire is to assume the worst of us, right? So in the yeah. same way, if if Tory is legally exonerated for some, let's just say he gets off legally somehow. Yeah. Then the story will be that he's innocent. If he's punished, the story will be why would she allow him to engage with the system? You're supposed to be a real right. you're supposed to have taken care of that on the streets. Right. You know, right. If, if something happens to him on the streets, then you know, another a young black man taken down for what? I mean, like there's yeah. no at every there's turn no there's no winning. At every turn, there's an excuse for violence and and loathing toward us like at, at every turn and go on no i was just right. thinking like I'm even the i know you are fired up but i'm just sitting i'm sitting here listening you know, during a serious conversation but i'm also like but i look crazy no you know because i'm also thinking about just personal relationships around people um that i know and black women and just hearing all of our stories and it just seems like it's always like oh well you know, all the trauma that he went through and, you know, um, or they blame the mother even. I mean, but sometimes how, the, you know, we're, I, I'm a, you know, 
a mother to a, a son that I said, you know, I'm not going to raise you. And I said at one time, I, I felt bad after, but I was like, I'm not raising a fuck boy, you know, <laughs> but he was just getting me. So like, he was only listening to men and not listening to any woman in his life. I was like, look it, you're not going to just expect all of this labor from women. You're not going to just put all of your emotions and all of these things. Yes, you know, we can have a conversation, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to get myself together in front of men and then I'm just going to fall apart. So there was conversations yeah. that I was having, which is, you know, I'm getting a little choked up about it. Like as a mother and as a black mother, it's just certain things that we're expected to do. And, you know, and they, and they blame us, right? They even blame us like, oh, it's because we don't have a man in the house or mm -hmm. it's the, um, mother-led households that's creating it. And, and there's a balance to it. But I just think at every turn, Black women are, you know, the reason for everything. As far as like, you know, I'm just thinking about like domestic abuse and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, well, she should have left or she should have, right. you know, and, and that's what I teach my son. You know, I talk about these types of things. And I said, you know, what I want you to do is make sure that you know how to be in community here. So you do, it's not chores. You're not getting an allowance. What you'll get from me is you're going to get um, what I call seed money. You're going to get everything you want as a basic need. And then you're also going to get things that are like, you know, what are your desires, right? And if you sh are in community and doing the things in partnership here at the house, then you get all of those things. And when you get out of my house, you will have an investment property or whatever that looks like. And you will have a, a, a means of transportation because I don't want you to put all of your burden on a relationship because one, you don't know how to take care of yourself because I never had you cook or clean or different things like that. And the second part of that, I don't want you to stay into a relationship because you can't get access to a house or you driving around in her car. Did you right. see um, the video about the black woman who was angry with um, her the, the mother-in-law? I mean, the mother-in-law and the wife and the. I hope they yes. were. Acting. I, really hope I they think were. they were acting. I think they were acting, but it shows a larger issue when you look at the comments, right? Some people Not are like, "Oh, yes, he's a man, and he should have taken responsibility for his mother, and she should valorize the the wife and." all of these things. But when you look at how people also talk so poorly about the woman as well, and it looked like she was just having a whole bunch of everything on her shoulders. And there is that trope of, you know, black men, you know, sticking to their mothers. I'm just, I'm really thinking about this and how black women are just at a lose-lose situation in domestic violence and the lose-lose situation of how we're supposed to just like keep a man by letting, allowing them to be emotionally abusive, physically abusive. And then this idea that we're supposed to be, you know, not aggressive. We, we need to be a, um, a, a freak in the bed. We need to be all of these things. And I think that what's going on right now is that we are being shown that women are not respected like you know we know that they're, they're the most disrespected you know we know those things but i'm wondering what people like us in practice are able to do to i think sometimes we have to overcompensate and that's what i'm feeling right now like i can't even allow my vulnerability as a black woman where i'm like i'm tired i'm tired of you know being all things to all people and not being too smart because I come in a room and I threaten people because there are men that are like, oh, she thinks she's so smart. You know, like, I don't know if you feel that as well. And this idea that we're crazy because we don't want to, to engage in toxic behaviors. There's this thing that happens where I notice that people do to black women where um, they kind of like, it's the same thing that happened, Meg. You know, they make fun of you as a way of like, oh, I was just joking. I, you know, I didn't mean anything like that. But just constantly, like, our self esteem is being torn apart unless you are, you know, a Beyonce or, you know, different things like that. So I think that the idea that Meg is 5'10, 5'11, thick, brown skin, beautiful, but everyone calls her masculine. That to me is something that I really want us to come to. It's like, where, where can we be in our, our feminine? You, you get what I mean by that? And not submissive, but our divine feminine, where we are, you know, loved and supported and allowed not, I, I don't want to be so strong. Like, I don't want to have to do everything. I want to be able to be feminine, but I feel like I have to constantly be in my masculine energy. And at this point in my life, I don't want to 
I don't, that's why I'm not in a relationship because I don't want any relationship where I feel like I have to, you know, um, struggle in and with a, with in a relationship or being treated poorly, and then my reward is this man. And I also yeah. don't want to engage in any, you know behaviors where I feel like I'm not loved and respected. So here I am single when I want to not, I want to help me. You get what I'm, is it, are you feeling these things in this conversation or is it just me black? No, 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 I'm listening, but I'm, I'm feeling and there I'm with you on so much of that. You know, um, I will say like, I, whew, I don't even know where to begin. Um, but as far as having a helpmate, I think that's a really interesting, um, way of phrasing it because we are, you know, trained to be the helpmate for our partners and for other men in our lives and for other people in our family and our elders. And, you know, like there's just this expectation of how and whom we take care of. So I'm trying to say like, do they look crazy? I wish I could give her this chat stitch right here so I could just look at myself, make sure I don't look ah. horrible. For me, I look crazy. But anyway, you look um, you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I've been eating so many pies. Thank you, um, Faith, <laughs> producer Faith. You said you look great. Um, I'll just say, like, to get to that part, I'm not single because I've decided not to be in a relationship. Like, I've been dating, you know, I've been looking. And, and I'll say I, I took a long lap of I'm dating, but I'm not necessarily looking for something serious because I knew I was wow. moving across the country. And if I had that to do all over again, I'm like, you know, I spent two years um, on the other side of, 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 you know, 30, like, yeah, with a child already. Like, yeah, I'm just having fun. You know, and on one hand, I'm like, I deserve that. Like, because I have a child, I can't date casually or I can't, you know, like enjoy myself. I've been very intentional about doing that, that I, that I like men. I like dates. I like the streets to have fun. You know, I had quite a vibrant life before coronavirus. Um, not, and not that vibrant. Was, <laughs> had a vibrant I life. You. I love you. I love you too, Shamil. Um, that's why I was excited. I'm like, we'd be in California. We go out and have vibrant life together. You know, like. You, well, you brought the Rona with you. I brought clearly I might have because I kept going back to New York because I was having more vibrant time back, you know, out there. But um, anyway, so that's, a, you know, it's difficult to just balance that um, pre COVID. Uh, and when we're going to wrap this part up and get into a little game and then get out of here. Um, but that was certainly difficult to balance with parenting and work and the other demands that are made on me as a black woman. But I was also very intentional that I wasn't going to have. And yes, everything you said, I'm tired. I'm depressed. I'm t I'm, I don't want to work. I just want to have money right now. Like I'm just burnt out. You know, I have things that I that I need to do for for um to make a living. There are things I need to do for projects I care about. And right now I just want to lay down. I want to be in my bed. I don't want to work out. I don't want to parent. I don't want to do anything. I want to break. I'm burnt out. You know, like, so yeah. yes, I absolutely relate to that. And I'm at that point, despite the fact that I have left certain spaces in my life, or it hasn't always been what I would call self-care, but like that there were things for me outside of Naima. There were things for me outside of work, right? Yeah. So dating but has you're been so a powerful. So this is my question. I know we got to go move on, but so yeah. this is, the issue that I'm having that men and you know, the fragile ego or that this idea that since we're powerful, that's why I said a helpmate because you, we have yeah. like you know, names or, you know, I'm an Ivy league professor or all of these things that people like a persona, right? I'm not that persona. You know me, you know, like, you know what we be talking about, but right. for men, it becomes no, right. Like right. This threat, right? So that's what I'm interested in. Like how as powerful, and which is I think something that Meg is also dealing with. That's why I'm bringing it back to her. Powerful, powerful women. How is it that we are able to have a man that's secure in who he is and that we love him for his purpose and his passion and for being, but we are helpmates to each other? Because I think that's something that happens where people see you and they, you know, people as in men, they see you and they just get intimidated. I just wonder if that has something to do with, you know, being shot in your foot because you're a strong, powerful woman. I mean, there is something very... Uh you know, interesting about him shooting her, you know, in her foot when she's known for dancing, she's known for twerking, you know, and she's known for moving. Like there, there's that, that doesn't yeah. feel like, you know, to me, but, but uh, it's totally symbolic even if it was unintentional uh, that that was where he, you know, that he may have been thinking to not kill, but to whatever awful thing he was thinking, he could have killed her and whatever happens to him for this, you know, I hope it's severe um, because he deserves to be reckoned with. Um, cause that just, it, that, that's just so, I like, I don't even have words. 
Um, but uh, to your question, I know it's feasible. I've seen it happen. I've seen people have that kind of love. I've seen women, powerful women have that kind of love. I really want, you know, I know it's possible in intimate relationships. It's difficult. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's not easy to obtain, but what I really want is I want it to be the default kind of love that powerful women get. Right. I want you to have to work to unearn it, like the way that men have yeah. to work hard to yeah. unearn the love that they get from the masses. Right. It Come took on. people Kelly, three decades of grace while being an active sexual predator in plain sight. Right. Chris Brown was given every bit of grace imaginable. Like I could go on and on, you know, like it, it's it's embarrassing the amount of, of love and solidarity and just care and concern that we have shown to our men um and not brianna taylor and not brianna taylor Taylor. and not brianna taylor and not rihanna fancy and not megan the stallion and not sandra like it's just like and and corinne Gaines. like i could go on and on like i think the reason that brianna taylor is the so like brianna taylor has compelled more public outrage from people who are not black women than any other black woman who has died in uh, at the hands of the state. And I think that is la- has largely to do with the fact that she was killed when she was asleep. Because if she were awake, folks would have found a way to blame her for her own death. It yeah. would have been, you know, and early on there was some like, what kind of dude did she have, right? Is he the reason right. they were raiding the Then we find right. out it's the wrong thought together, right? But if she were awake, it could be, how did she react? Why didn't she open the door quicker? Why didn't she, you know, was she sassy? Yeah, yeah. So- only reason that we can we feel comfortable, you know, lionizing her in this way is that she was an essential worker who was asleep. What if she was a sex worker who had just beat her kid? Or right? a trans this woman. Is, or a trans woman. Like this is or you know, like she still has every right to not get murdered, you know what I mean, in her home in a no knock raid. Like it, it just it it it's devastating, um, but I, we have to get out of here. Um, so we're going to get out of here. I know. Do you have one more thing you want to say, and then we're going to play a real quick game? Go. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about, you know, also when are we able to just live as Black women if we are dying in childbirth? Like, I kind of want to put it. It's like from birth to when we're sleeping and dying. It's like we are not able to live full lives. And I, I don't know, I just wanted to leave it at like the medicine, the medical industry is supposed to be, you know, taking care of us. Like we're supposed to, that's where we're supposed to, like police officers are not keeping us safe. You know, medical professionals are not keeping us safe. I just wonder like- Really no institution, no group of people, there is nothing dedicated to keeping black women safe. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to say. So that's why I'm, I love our friendship and I love, you know, having these beautiful platonic friendships with women where I just love on y'all. I be dating my friends. That's why I was happy to you for you to come out here. I want to take you on a date, you know, and love on black women like we've never been loved on. But we can't even have that outside of us creating it for our own selves. And I just wanted to to kind of lift black women up and just say, I fucking love you. I, I am in love with black women. Yeah. You know. Okay. I love that. I black women, I too, I love you. I love us. I am in love with us. And you're right. There are again, there are individual relationships, there are small circles, there are, you know, mega celebrities, there are individuals who get to be loved. Um close to the way in which a black woman, you know, that a human being deserves to be loved. Uh, but the majority of us don't you know, even in the healthiest of partnerships, even under the best of circumstances, we don't really get to experience that in full because if it exists in the home, the second you step out the home, it's withdrawn, right? And and if you're right. experiencing in your professional space, there's a you know possibility that when you get home, it's taken away from you. It's rare that in every space in which you exist, your humanity is affirmed and recognized beyond just being loved and celebrated, just kind of like, do you get to be a person here? Do you get to have a full range of emotions and experiences? Are you exactly a laborer on behalf of everyone? I could go on and on and on, but we're going to play a quick game. I know this is like uh, quite a pivot from what we've been um, sitting with. And I'm only doing this for you because I do not play games in life. 
say Johnny just got me to play chess for the second time and I beat him by the way but yeah I don't play games but I'll play with you what's up we'll be playing I think you're gonna be so good at this and I think say Johnny is giving you a lot of practice so this is called let me ask you something real quick and okay. I'm going to put uh, 60 seconds on the clock and I'm going to ask you uh, as many questions as possible um, in the in the key of seven-year-old if you will I'm going to ask you and this is inspired by um, the way that my child and certainly other children children will wait until drink. The, yes take a drink they wait until the most inopportune moment to ask the most difficult questions possible right so real quick can i just can i just like you never got hit i got hit with the i'll give it i gave one example the first time we played so i'll give a different one this time i was getting ready to get on a conference call i was walking down the street with my daughter we were running errands um we were preparing to move here and so a lot of running around to do and I had a conference call. And so I was like, okay, Naima, um, we, you know, we weren't able to get back home before the call. I said, so I said, I'm going to have to put my headphones in and take this call. So I just need, you know, a few minutes um, to be distracted. And she said, okay, can I ask you something real quick? I said, shoot. She said, what's sex? No, nope. no. And this is how the big questions get asked around here. So I'm going to give you 60 seconds on the clock and I want to see how many questions you can get through. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Come on. Okay, let's go. What is yogurt? And some milk product that's kind of custardy how did anybody know to have milk in the first place like who said we should drink a cow's milk oh shit i don't drink cow's milk but you know they saw a, a, a baby calf drinking milk and they felt that we needed milk to survive and be healthy that's stupid i was thinking i could just get my own place and live by myself is and okay. How old are you? Seven? Yeah. You know what? I will get all of your things together. And if you can survive, I will pay your bills. You're not going to miss me? I, you know, I will miss you. But I think sometimes absence of the uh, distance, the heart is fonder. Heart Why, do boys fonder. Have Why do boys what? Why do boys have all? Uh, we're out of time. Asked why do boys have nipples? What? Boys have nipples because they have a similar anatomy to women. No, but they're you're out of time. You're out of time. You're out of time. I think it's good. You don't have to answer. It's not a test. You did great. You did great, except for when you, you did great. There's no grade. You're like looking. I can see you're like, how did I do? You did just, it was a game for fun. You really don't play oh, games. Uh, I don't I'm, at all. Coming through I'm like, with, I'm coming through with like black card revoked and taboo and like Jenga or something. I'm just gonna force you. <laughs> you know what? That is because, and it, it's so it's a part of my healing. Is I just don't want to be wrong. You know, I I just feel like I have to be perfect in life. Well, nobody is perfect, and those were perfect answers, nonetheless. You know, because that's part you. of that's a big, I love you. And that's such a big part of what parenting is, just making it up as you go along and acting, saying it in a convincing tone or saying, you know what? I don't know. We should Google you know, it. That is actually what I say to say, Johnny, I should have just told the truth. I tell him to Google every single thing, but then say, say Johnny thinks he knows everything. So I'm not having to tell him to research because he doesn't know everything. I love Say Johnny and I love you. And thank you so much for being here. This was fun. And thank you everyone for watching. Um, we will not be here next week. Uh, I'm going to be off the grid for a few days, but I look forward to seeing you week after next. We have another great guest lined up and I'll talk to you soon. Everyone uh, be well, take care of your children, your friends and each other.